Hello and welcome to this second video on Great Works in Crusader Kings 2. This time we'll be talking about the more exclusive Great Works. So those are the Great Works that require you to have a specific culture or religion. First of all, we'll be going over the various temple buildings. These are the Grand Cathedral for Christians, the Grand Mosque for Muslims, the Grand Synagogue for Jews, as well as the Grand Temples for Reformed Pagans, Buddhists and Hindus. Although they are all called Grand Temples, these last three are different. They have different modifiers and different unique features. All of these buildings share the same build cost at a base 9.4k gold in upfront costs for the four stages and 6350 total gold during construction for a total of 15750 gold base cost. By default, once you've gotten them to that point, the Christian, Muslim and uh, Jewish buildings will grant you plus 0.45 monthly prestige and plus 0.6 piety. The pagan version will grant you 0.8 prestige but only 0.2 piety and the Hindu version grants you 0.35 prestige and 0.8 piety whereas the Buddhist version gets the best of both worlds uh, with a total of 0.8 prestige and 0.8 piety although the Buddhist temple does get a 0.5 prestige from the very first stage so it is very likely that that was intended to be 0.05 but for now, it gives you the highest amount for both of these modifiers. Let's get to the details of the actual buildings. The Christian Grand Cathedral has 8 unique features which together grant plus 5 cruel temple, city and proud opinion, plus 2 same religion opinion, plus 20% siege defense and plus 0.3 piety, though you do need to store a relic artifact in the great work to get this piety. Furthermore, it has the extra effect of giving you the ability to intimidate people and having a higher chance of removing smugglers, rings and highway rubber bands. Also worth noting is that you can get the belt artifact by looting it. Not exactly too amazing a uh, great work, though having some stacking opinion bonuses never hurts. For historical versions, there is of course the recently added Notre Dame in Paris and of course in Constantinople we have the Hagia Sophia. The Notre Dame appears starting in 1163 and in 1250 will be at stage 3. It doesn't get finished though in any possible start date as that happens past 1337 and as for the Hagia Sophia it exists and is fully upgraded in all the dates and it also has an interesting unique quality in that it is useful by Catholics, Orthodox and Sunnis but not by other Christians which is a bit unfortunate for the iconoclasts in the very first start date. Sunnis, however, won't be able to build the cathedral features, though they do seem to be able to use them if they have been built previously. Next up, uh, the mosque. It too has 8 unique features, and this time they grant you a total of plus 5 kind and scholar opinion and plus 8 same religion opinion. Furthermore, you get minus 3% revolt risk, plus 7.5% percent disease resistant and plus 0.05 monthly piety as well as improving your ability to convert counties to your religion. It also improves the invite holy man decision and gives you an extra minor title to hand out. I suppose the revolt risk reduction is especially useful if you are keeping your counties a different religion for the Jizya tax and if not then at least you're converting things faster thanks to this great work. Furthermore the plus 8 same religion opinion is a pretty big boon to have. And then moving on to the last of the Abrahamic religions we get the Grand Synagogue. This time with only 6 unique features which together grant you a total of plus 5 scholar and temple vessel opinion, plus 2 same religion opinion, minus 1% revolt risk, plus 1% army morale and plus 10% land organization as well as plus 0.55 prestige and plus 0.05 piety per month as well as the improved invite holy man and county conversion that we saw on the mosque as well 
Synagogue is perhaps somewhat surprising in the amount of military boons it grants, but you can probably use that if you are playing as a Jewish ruler with the Abrahamic religions. Done, let's get going with the Grand Temples. First we have the Pagan Grand Temple. Before talking about the upgrades, I ought to mention that it is considered a burial ground, which means that when your ruler dies, there is an event asking how you want to bury him, which basically allows you to spend gold in exchange for prestige and piety and influencing people's opinions based on their opinion of your predecessor. As for the Grand Temple's features, it has 8 of them, and they give you a total of plus 10 zealous, plus 5 diligent, plus 2 same religion opinion, minus 24% revolt risk, and plus 0.5 monthly piety, in addition to enabling private conversations, giving you a minor title to hand out, and having an increased chance of removing smugglers' rings and highway rubber bands in its county. Bear in mind though that one of these upgrades, the Sacrificial Altar, which grants 5% Revolt Risk Reduction and plus 5 Zealous Opinion, does require you to have Bloodthirsty Gods. And somewhat strangely, the Aztec Unique Doctrine does not unlock it. It specifically needs to be the Bloodthirsty Gods Doctrine. Moving back to a religion that doesn't do human sacrifices, we get the Buddhist Grand Temple. With a total of 10 unique features, you're going to have some problems fitting all of those into the 8 upgrade slots that you have. But if you were to somehow manage that, you'd get plus 5 Scholar Opinion, plus 2 Eastern Opinion, plus 3 Buddhist and plus 2 Same Religion Opinion. Though these last two should be the same, since unless you're Buddhist, then the plus 2 Same Religion Opinion isn't going to activate. Aside from Opinions, you get plus 10% Local Tax, plus 20% Siege Defense, minus 6% Revolt Risk, plus 5% disease resistance, and plus 0.25 piety, as well as better holy men, faster conversion of counties, and faster removal of the smuggler's ring and highway rubber band. One last thing to note is that the piety only comes after you've stored a relic artifact in the great work, just like with the cathedral. With a total of plus 7 opinion with anyone who shares your religion, plus 5 from the Buddhist and same religion, and plus 2 from Eastern opinion, this great work is going to do you great favors in making people in your realm like you. Finally, the last Grand Temple is of course the Hindu Grand Temple. This one comes with only 6 unique features and they together give you plus 5 Scholar, plus 3 Temple, plus 3 Dynasty and plus 2 Same Religion Opinion as well as a minus 8% Revolt Risk, plus 10% Siege Defense, plus 5% Land Organization, plus 5% Disease Resistance and plus 0.05 piety, as well as giving you better holy men, faster conversion of counties, and lastly to note is that there exists a historical great temple in the form of the Konark Sun Temple in Kataka, and this Kanark Sun Temple in India is built in 1250 and gets finished in 1260. And that is all there is to say about the great temples. Continuing on with the religious buildings, we are going to talk about the Stone Circle. The historical example, of course, is Stonehenge, found in Wiltshire, England. And the Stone Circle requires you to be pagan. It costs a total of 8,320 gold, split between 4,600 gold up front and 3,720 gold over time. At stage 4, it grants you a total of plus 0.5 monthly prestige, plus 0.55 monthly piety, and plus 2 same religion opinion bonus. And the great work has access to 5 different unique features. These give you a total of minus 9% revolt risk, plus 5 zealous opinion, plus 2 same religion opinion, and plus 3 dynasty opinion, as well as a minor title and private conversations. However, the uh, Dynasty Opinion Bonus only is available for people of the Germanic religion, as the feature is exclusive to them. And there is also, again, the Sacrificial Altar, which requires that you have the Bloodthirsty Gods feature. So if you don't have that, you will not see that feature and miss out on the plus 5 Zealous and 5% Revolt Risk Reduction from that. 
all in all a little bit lackluster especially if you don't even have access to one of the very specific features following that we'll get to the pyramids coming in aztec and egyptian flavors both of these count as burial grounds meaning you will get access to the same event that the pagan grand temple gives you and of course you will need to pay to have these things built the aztec temple has a base cost of 12,000 gold in upfront costs and 3.6k gold over time for a total of 15.6k gold and it gives you 0.7 monthly prestige and 0.3 monthly piety at stage 4. Technically, it is supposed to have 5 unique features available to it in the form of the mythological beast, hidden room, sacrificial altar, necropolis and traps. Unfortunately, the sacrificial altar is not available for the Aztec religion since it requires bloodthirsty gods, which Aztecs cannot pick. They will only be able to pick the invaders doctrine if they want to sacrifice people after reforming the reigning four features however give you plus five proud plus three dynasty and plus two same religion opinion as well as 0.05 monthly prestige and makes it less likely for artifacts to be stolen as well as having traps that can kill random courtiers when somebody conquers the pyramids very unimpressive especially considering the amount of gold it costs as for the Egyptian pyramid, it costs a lot more to build, with a total cost of 15,000 gold up front, 9,500 gold over time, for a staggering total of 24,500 gold base cost, and can only be built if you are Egyptian, Coptic or a lunatic, or you have chosen the pyramid creation doctrine when you reformed your pagan religion. Fortunately, it does have somewhat better base effects than the Aztec Pyramid, granting you a whopping plus 1.2 monthly prestige, 1% revolt risk reduction, and plus 2 same religion opinion. Furthermore, it gives you access to not just the features that the Aztec Pyramid has, but also 3 extra ones, giving you private conversations, a minor title, plus 0.05 prestige, and plus 0.01 piety and of course if you have the bloodthirsty gods doctrine in your religion then you can also build the sacrificial altar with five percent revolt risk reduction and plus five zealous opinion absurdly expensive but at least it is better than the aztec pyramid of course there does exist a historical great pyramid and for that you will have to go to egypt you can find it in the province of al Ghazia. you there have the great pyramid of khufu for a far more sane great work with specific culture or religion requirements there is the amphitheater which requires you to be roman italian greek hellenic or have ritual sacrifices as a religion feature furthermore you cannot build this if you are following a peaceful religion if you do meet all these requirements you can build a great work for 9.1k gold split between 5.5k in upfront costs and 3.6k during construction at which point it will give you plus 0.4 monthly prestige 4% revolt risk reduction and plus one same religion opinion bonus aside from this the amphitheater has six unique features together giving you a total of plus five hunter and poet opinion plus 0.25 monthly prestige plus five percent mounted troop strength and plus 2.5 percent local tax modifier as well as giving you a minor title to hand out and the ability to recruit a gladiator every five years gladiators are courtiers with combat and martial focused traits the mounted troop strength is a bit wasted on italians and romans giving their written use but at least greeks can use it well on theirs finally for our last great work the statue of a horse like the pyramid, it can be built if you are a lunatic, although this time the alternative methods for being eligible to construct it are either being a horse or having nomadic government. Like the normal statue, this one cannot be built by iconoclasts or zealous Muslims. As for its cost and effects, it has the same 7.2k gold cost total for starting the four stages that the normal statue had, but its during construction cost is a slightly higher 4.2k gold adding up to a total of 11,400 gold base cost 
once fully built it gives you plus 0.4 prestige and plus 10 horse opinion bonus and lets you add a total of five unique features one of which will of course be your choice of plating just like with the normal statue and assuming you pick the most expensive option there you'll get a total of plus five horse plus five kind and plus three density opinion plus 0.3 multi prestige and plus five percent mounted troops and archer strength definitely worth building as a horse for the massive horse opinion bonus you're going to get out of this statue otherwise it's a little bit of a silly choice but then again what do you expect when you are building a giant statue of a horse and that was it for all of the great works at least until more get added next video we'll be returning to bloodlines to take a look at what bloodlines are available in the new iron century start date that was recently added until then, enjoy building those great works.